Good morning, folks. We've got space weather, planetary science news, galactic astrophysics, and geophysical alerts to cover today. We have another special video coming tonight, but let's start with our star. And we're watching the last two days here to see the turning of the coronal holes and the active regions. There was a small CME off the new equatorial sunspot group, and sunspots are in fact the major watch right now as they are here in spades, peppering the southern hemisphere with a group at the incoming limb on the north as well. Eyes on them. As for the small CME, we can see that eruption here on SOHO coronagraphs. Bulk will miss Earth, but we could see a glancing blow from it. Not a big concern. But if you noticed other things in the sequence, indeed, both Mercury and Venus should be visible on the coronagraphs now. The big light on the right side is Venus coming into view, reflecting hard on the other side of the Sun. Little Mercury is incoming south of the system plane and reflects less because it's between us and the Sun. And we also had a sun diving comet come in there as well. Hello, little guy. Let's go to planetary science next and start with the eye candy. James Webb shot of Neptune and its rings. That is Triton up at the top, brighter because it reflects so much light with an icy surface and little atmosphere, while the gases on Neptune absorb quite a bit of the light. We'll move next to Enceladus. Many would already classify this moon as habitable, but we now also know that its ocean has an even better chance to chemically support life than we previously believed, particularly in the dissolved phosphorus component. That's a big one. Rounding out the planetary science, we come to Mars, where the number of ancient lakes is now thought to be way undercounted. Good study here suggesting it was once even more of a watery world than we thought before. In galactic science, they have spotted a hot gas bubble zooming around the galactic center and say it's moving at 30% of the speed of light. They are amazed by this, but they should be incredulous. There is a better explanation for its apparently rapid movement, and that is the constant excitement of the surrounding gas by the magnetism of the galactic core. They have enough information to know it's a magnetic event, they say so, but still attribute the readings to one blob moving at nearly impossible speeds rather than the spinning magnetism coming from the central engine of the Milky Way, which is silly because they are the ones who know that the magnetism does exactly that, twirls in a swirl outward as part of the larger magnetic system of the galaxy, just as it works at stars, planets, and with the sphere magnet in a lab. Some quick closing notes. We saw the turtle stranding a couple days ago and how it was related to Earth's changing magnetic field, and that is also the best explanation for the recent whale beachings in Tasmania, where the south magnetic pole is crawling nearby. These have been more and more numerous in recent years. New Zealand officials had to put Taupo on alert due to increasing seismic activity nearby. That is a super volcano and hopefully it's not about to erupt because that would seriously kick off the major climatological events much earlier than expected. Lastly folks, yes we've got another video coming out later today that's 2.30 p.m. Mountain Time and 4.30 p.m. Eastern. 1.30 p.m. Pacific. See you back here for a quick update on the ongoing shift and how it's hitting the ozone. We greatly appreciate your support. At the Shopify link below the video, you're going to find everything 20% off. The special goes the rest of this month of September, applying to our books on the ongoing Earth condition and the shift. It applies to our kids' science books and our merchandise too. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 5 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.